My name is Chris Forsick, but we have a special uh, co-host with me today. So please let me introduce you, Tarantala. Welcome. Hello, guys. I think uh, it's uh, really nice to meet you, and I think we will have a great webinar today. I think that uh, now audio is fine. If we experience some problems, please have that in mind. I will check every that everything is okay. But if we experience experience some problems, please be patient. We will solve it. It's just technical problems. Great. Uh, Toronto, you want to maybe uh, uh, give a quick introduction of yourself? Oh yeah, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Okay. Uh, first of all, my name is Nenad. Friends call me Nesha, and I'm um, I'm having um, I'm starting a thread called uh, Spiders Den on Forex Factory site. Maybe you have heard of it. Maybe you you haven't. But basically, it's a thread that has over two million of visitors since the start, and uh, it's basically one of uh, maybe most visited author thread. I give all informations and analysis for free because I have many friends who want to make money and many other friends who I have not met uh, never but uh, basically they're all my friends because they work the same business as I do and I really want to help them. So it's a quick introduction. I will show you my thread also where I make analysis. I also write analysis for uh, Admiral Markets website for our blog. And I also did some analysis of Forex Street. Forex Street is also one of the biggest Forex websites in the world. I have done it earlier when I was working for a platinum investments firm. So basically, it was it's just a quick resume of my curriculum video. So Chris, you can continue. OK, Thank cool. You. Sounds great. Um, maybe one day we can also dive into uh, what type of trading you do and stuff, but with um, otherwise we can go into that a bit later at the end as well. Um, so today we're going to be taking a look at second part of fear and trading, uh, a practical guide how to conquer fear and trading. Of course, uh, last month in March we took a look at why and why we have fear and trading. Now we're going to be a bit more practical and look for some solutions as well. So. Let me maximize this quickly, and um, we'll get the show on the road. So once again, welcome. Admiral Markets is sponsoring this. But before we actually start, just a quick risk disclaimer. Uh, please be aware that trading foreign exchange uh, on margin carries a high level of risk, and it might be suitable to seek the advice of an financi independent financial advisor. Um, and also please note that this video uh, or webinar is for educational purposes only. Okay, so thanks for your attention on that. Um, as I said, today's event is sponsored by uh, no one else or less than Admiral Markets with uh, great prizes in their contest and some, uh, some cool features that you might want to take a look at, such as buying and selling direct from the platform and some great spreads as well. So uh, after this webinar, I would definitely recommend a, a look at uh, their website. So today's goal, um, just a quick overview, basically, as I said, a practical guide. Uh, we can try to decrease the fear element when trading because the trading psychology, as we all know, is a, an important part of uh, the trading performance. So we're going to take a look at that and try to find some solutions is today's agenda. So just some quick questions, as you are normally aware of from my side, is that um, we referred to the in the first webinar about things that I asked you to think about things that uh, you might fear in your trading. So I'm curious if anyone has uh, made a thorough attempt to uh, to take a look at that. And uh, if you do, if you wouldn't, if you have time, please let us know what elements you found out you fear the most. That will be interesting uh, to talk about. So. Uh, when you're doing that, hopefully some, some people will, will uh, take the time, then uh, we'll take a look at those answers. But in the meantime, we'll just continue onwards. And uh, with a quick introduction of some reasons why this fear is so important, okay? Because fear and impatience, fear and greed are well-known terms, of course. And this is just a small recap of, of last time where we said that 
basically fear was a good thing in the past, right? When or or you know still is in a situation where there's danger because our subconsciousness tries to protect us when we fear danger, and that's why when we fear have fear in the market, uh, basically the subconsciousness of ourselves is trying to protect ourselves from the market. So we do something irrational, like maybe not sticking to our trading plan or closing a trade earlier or accepting a loss while we actually have our stop loss at a different spot. So that's what the fear kind of creates uh, in ourselves. Um, while a trader who has mastered that to, to a higher extent can, can overcome these uh, emotions and then has maybe a concern about the trade but calms himself enough to react in a productive manner. So that's just a quick summary there. And yeah. Uh, Nenet, Nenet, maybe here you have, this is some fear stuff definitions. You would like to explain maybe? I think Nenet, you there? Sorry, folks, I'm just checking if... Uh, so I got a quick message here from Nainet that he lost sound, so my apologies for that. Um, you know, Nainet, that's why he was warning you at the beginning that uh, uh, he had some sound problems there, so um, let me just continue then and we'll see when he's able to resume and come back. Okay, sorry for that, folks. He was already a bit worried about it at the beginning. Okay, so fear. Um, by definition, Nainet says basically it's an unpleasant emotion uh, caused by the anticipation of danger, right? As we as we said, which which leads to these feelings of anxiety and apprehension. Um, and basically, there are two ways of looking at it: um, as a friend or as an enemy. And if you if you uh, like arm it or view it as a friend, uh, you can actually make fear uh, a good thing and you get a better concentration, a better awareness, uh, and you become sharper. So he, what Nenet means is that you become actually more aware of your environment, you're, you're more active, more alert, and that's when fear actually makes you a better trader. And, and he's also saying then again, if you use it in a way that it leads to more anxiety and you get more nervous and you you know you you do other things than uh, you should be doing like revenge trading, uh, then it's to your disadvantage and this in indecisiveness will only lead to bad decisions. All right, so this is what Nana basically wanted to uh, translate to you. All right. So there are many fears, just a quick summary here. For example, you know, there's so many aspects that you can fear, uh, that traders fear in general. I'm not saying that all of you fear all of these fears. I understand that. Some of you might have a few. Some of, my, some of you have, might have nothing. That would be great. Some of you might have maybe a majority of them. In any case, many things are possible. Fear of losing, fear of being wrong. I mean, you can see the whole list here, the market. Uh, that there's some psychology aspect of the market or your stop loss, uh, insecurity about your stop loss or risking capital, risking itself, you know, many things as you can see, all right? So um, no sense to <clears throat> mention them one by one, but there are many aspects that uh, that is possible. All right, so Nenet made a nice, actually, of all those fears that I listed, he made a nice categorization kind of. Uh, a summary of all those fears. So, you know, you, you basically he said there are five things. Fear of a loss, in his opinion. So, you know, accept that. Uh, even try demo trading if, if you have problems with that. Um, you know, he's saying basically you need to trust yourself to execute your trading plan without exception. Um, and you have to be decisive without hesitation uh, to, to trade your plan. Okay. Then you have fearing fear of missing good trades. Uh, this can be dangerous because the trader will join the trend at any price, right? So then you're kind of like oversensitive to movements that you missed, or fear of being wrong. All right. So you know that's that's an issue because this game, this forex trading game, is not about being right or wrong. It's about being money. You could be wrong a lot. You could be wrong 70% of the time and still earn a lot. 
if you have the correct risk to reward uh, ratios and you go for 10 to 1 <clears throat> or 5 to 1 uh, reward, as we know, you could be 70% wrong. So, you know, but still, that's definitely a fear there out there. Number three, uh, fear of being ripped off by scams and fear of brokers. All right, so very nice comprehensive list. Maybe Nemeth can explain more when he gets back online. All right, so ah, there is Nemeth. Let's see if we can hear him, folks. Um, Nemeth, you're, you're back? Yes, I'm back. Unfortunately, ah. that happens. I don't know why. Maybe it's the sound card. I don't know. Maybe next time I'll switch to another computer, but now we'll have to deal with that. No problem. Sorry. No problem. Uh, did you see we're actually at the fear categorization? So I went through it uh, a bit, but maybe you would like to add something, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I didn't manage to listen what you were talking about. Uh, fear categorization. This is what I made. Uh, first of all, guys and girls, uh, whoever trades needs to have to be aware of fear of loss. Fear of loss is a very, very bad thing, but you need to accept it. Uh, what is that? Uh, for example, when a trader sees that his or her position making a profit, the trader starts fearing that any second the position will turn against him or her. But you need to know that it's not about whether you win or lose. It's about how much you win when you are right and lose when you are wrong. And that matters. So basically, first of all, you need to accept the thing. You need to accept the fear. And when you accept it, you need to deal with it. You need to have a loss management. And in the next webinar, we will also talk about uh, stop loss placing. When you know where to place your stop loss, you will have no fear, believe me. And to achieve that, first, you need to do a demo, demo trading. You need to, to do a demo trading on some, on, for example, other market platform, because you will then have assurance and you will be sure in your trades. And it is only then when you can trust yourself to execute your trading plan without exception and when you can enter and exit the market with decisiveness and without hesitation, only then you can consider going live. You need to, do, you need to know that. And the very big thing in trading is that you should not have a fear of loss. The first thing is that you need to accept it, you need to manage that, and you need to go live without fear of loss. And that was my first point when I was thinking how, uh, sh how I should make a fear categorization. Because fear, of fear is, you know, it's a mutual thing. We all, we all uh, share the same fear. But you just need to accept it. I am a full-time trader. And there, is, there are many times when I'm not right. But I know where to put stop loss. I know how big entry should be when I enter my position. I just, I just don't have any fear. And now I can, I can tell you about fear of missing good trades. You should never also have that sort of fear. Because if you have the, that, that sort of fear, you will, you will join the trend at any price. And usually, what happens is the traders buy or sell when the price has already moved quite a bit. And I'm sure that all of you who are listening to this webinar now have that fear of missing good trades. It is because you're not sure whether you will have that, that good trade again and again. And you need to be sure in your, in your, in your trades you need to be sure that you will join next time, probably at a better price. Probably at a better price. Because if you have a fear of missing good trades, you probably are, you, you probably are thinking, you're probably thinking that uh, uh, the price has gone already and it will continue to go in that uh, same direction. But it won't. What usually happens is that price reverses from your price and it will go in another, another direction. And then you pray to your God to reverse the trade, but it, it, just, it just won't happen. You need to stop be fearing of missing good trades. Because market will come to you. 
you don't chase the market you need to let market come to you and our next thing is that you should never fear of being wrong why because I am a full trader also I'm also wrong sometimes even listen even when you're when you have your system which is tr system I think your trading style your trading system whatever you use to trade if your trading style is only 40 percent good you will still be in a profit because you need to know how to manage your trade you need to know where to put stops how uh, how big your entry size should be and then you should not be you should not be, never be uh, feared of, of being wrong because you will manage you will deal with your losses you just should never put a bigger leverage than your account is you know you need to go with your entry positions as big as your count is big you need to manage it according to your equity not with with your uh, opportunities and or chances and then when you have a good money management you will never have a fear again because you can let your price go 50% in in other in other direction because you, your money management is good 50 pips is nothing if you know how to manage it even 100 pips is nothing if you know how to manage it you know my style of trading for every 10k account i only i only enter with 0 0.2 to 0.5 per trade lots per trade i'm i'm talking about a lot size standard lot size for mt4 platform so basically I manage my trades according to my man money management. I'm really, I, I don't have a fear of being wrong. Because trading is a probability game and there will always be losses. You just stack to your odds. When you have a good trading style, you stack to your odds. When you enter the market, it's 50-50, right? And then you just stack your odds in your favor. When you have a good system, it's 60-40. When you have a good money management, it's 70-30. You will be right. You will be in profit. So don't be feared of being wrong. There are also two uh, sorts, another two sorts of categorizations. It's fear of being ripped off by scams, and it's somehow connected to fear of brokers. But you know, guys, when you when you go with a good and regulated um, uh, broker, you should never be fear of being ripped off by scams. Because that thing is only done by bucket shops. And you can recognize bucket shops. You can read to Forex Peace Army. You can talk to your friend. Many, many of my friends here in Serbia talk with me when they want to place their money, to deposit their money to a broker. And I, I always tell them, OK, guys, I won't tell you where to go, but I will tell you about regulations. So you, need, you shouldn't be feared of being ripped off. When you deal, for example, with other Marcus, that sort of fear should be neglected. That, that, that isn't, you know. But to, uh, uh, concerning other brokers, there are some cases that brokers were ripping off their clients. But you know, you have internet, you have Google, so you can always see what other brokers do. So basically, I, I'm, I'm talking, you know, I don't work for other markets, but I'm the client. And, you know, I. I can say that Admiral is a really, really good and regulated broker. That's my opinion. So you take it like that. Also, fear of brokers. You shouldn't have a fear of brokers if the broker is a good and regulated company with a good history behind it. Because why? I, I'm telling you, no broker can control our mind and fingers. It's your job. It's your job to enter your position. It's your job to do a good technical analysis, to read, treat, and then to let your mind uh, click on your left mouse and enter a position. So no broker can control your mind. There are some brokers that can do against you. But you know you need to see disclosure agreement when you deal with those sorts of brokers. But you should never have a fear of a good and regulated broker. 
So my yep. point is that those five sort of fears are the most common fears that we all have when trading, and when we all have when uh, the fear when when we uh, need to choose what broker we should use, and that is irrational fear, as long as you check the broker's history and ratings. So Chris, yep. makes if sense. You have something to add? It's okay. I'm. I that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. There, there's someone ex there's someone actually who who's commenting on that before and said that um, yeah the broker can control quick moving markets uh, in opening or closing but yeah you already fully responded to that so that that's great and someone who actually also responded by saying that indeed they they have a big fear of of losing money uh, of either yeah that's what you see often either the loss or of course the money but that that's also indeed as you said the money management side where we have to reduce our risk as as traders to to decent size uh, uh, portions yeah that's well well uh, of course and I'm telling you again if you have for example one k account it's a thousand pounds thousand dollars thousand money units account. Don't open trades with one standard lot. Then you will be, of course, you will have fear. You will be terrorized by, by your trading because if it goes in contra of your direction, in in other direction, you will lose a lot. You can open one standard lot only if you have at least 10k account. Okay, you can do it with with 5k account, but sooner or later, you will be feared for your trading because. You, you see, it's called over leveraging. So don't do it. You know, yes. don't do it. Absolutely. Just, yeah, just do it. You know, and I think that a lot of. Yeah, sorry. No problem, Chris. I just want to say that if you use your money management, we will talk next time about money management. You shouldn't be feared because you, you won't have a big loss. You need to cut your losses short and let your winners run. That, that's, that we will talk about that. Okay, Chris, I think you also, can. I think also a lot of um, fear for loss comes from negative self-talk, uh, comes from viewing the market as a dangerous place inst instead of seeing it as an opportunity to actually um, take trades. And that fear of loss is something that maybe is, is hidden subconsciously in us and it, it can do tricky stuff with us when, uh, when we can't control that. So that's, that's definitely um, tricky. And as you said as well about making a decision, if we have too much indecision, we're going to have a kind of a brain freeze, as I call it, and then basically we're stuck like a deer looking at headlights, right, as traders, like, what do I do? We're totally frozen in one spot, and that's something you want to avoid as a, as a trader. You want to keep the thinking process or the analysis process open and be stay reasonable in your analysis of the chart without getting totally you know frozen in in your um, process so we have here a bit of a, 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 a kind of a list of things that might help you with all these fears that we just categorized and um, then it explained so uh, something that you might want to maybe practice uh, to get rear, especially this, I think is especially geared towards fear of loss, and maybe being right. Of course, this has not not that much connection to the broker, and what was the other one? Mm, broker and why well, anyhow? Uh, those are things that you just have to make a decision, read about, and that's it, right? This is the fear of loss and being right is a bit maybe more a tedious process that you would take step by step. So some to do list maybe here. Be positive and constructive towards your trading, towards the market, so that you have like an upbeat, positive energy um, when when trading. Um, depends, of course, also on your character style, how you like to trade, but in general, that would be better, I think. Uh, be alert and attentive, so that your mind is open and absorbing information, and that you're not blocking information that is actually very useful because you have a bias to something. Let you know the market speak, and we listen to what they say. And um, when we're actually trading, and we do something we don't like, and we might consider it a mistake, what we want to do is learn from that afterwards. After our trading is finished, uh, we want to learn from our mistakes without blaming the market necessarily, 
but do it after uh, you finish the trading because we do learn from that uh, but you wanna the next day forget those mistakes as well and trade with the same energy and same kind of uh, level of concentration as if you'd never made those mistakes because if you if you focus too much on those mistakes that you did yesterday that's gonna bite you and you're gonna see those mistakes again uh, haunt you if you're not if you're thinking about the past and not fully focused on the future. So, um, some other things maybe, like for example, uh, we already talked about last time, for those of you who are there, like how do you see the market? What kind of animal would you describe the market? That's kind of maybe the way how you look at it. So you want to have a balance in your approach so that you're not too nervous but not too overconfident because overconfident can also lead to higher risk taking. And you want to have a, a, the best is to have a very nice, confident but not overconfident, well-balanced mentality there and uh, not worry too much about being right or wrong. And uh, the best is to find a, a you know, your own psychology that matches the market psychology so that you have a, a nice harmony with the market, all right? Uh, it's a bit maybe difficult, not easy uh, process to achieve, but that's basically what it boils down to, that what you see in the market is natural to you, but also fits in the, the market behavior. So my advice to you is to, to really take, I'll show you a to-do list there later on, but to take small steps daily Make them specific, make these goals measurable, accurate, realistic, and timely, and take those small steps every day. And if you do that in day in, day out, then eventually one month, three months, five months from now, year from now, you'll be well on your way. Okay, Chris, now I can, I can uh, tell our friends that uh, fear can burn our account. And uh, that is also a sort of a common fear that we all experience at least one time in our life. Well, when I started to trade, well, you know, I thought I thought I know everything about trading. I thought I I am, you know, I will make money every day and such things. And then after two months, of course, I was a wise trader. I didn't know anything about trading and I burnt my account. And uh, later, uh, in my learning curve, I have learned that fear of burning the account is completely irrational. Because, as I told you, as long as money management is right, you cannot burn your account. Imagine how many trades you should be unsuccessful at to burn your account if your money management is correct. Well, if you manage to do, then you need to you need to forget about trading, really, because you know I just know as as long as your money management is okay, you you won't burn your account. So pay attention to that. The account cannot be burned by itself. You, the ultimate trader, is the one who makes decision decisions. So just apply good money management and forget about fear of burning your account. Also, revenge trading. I know that many traders do that. And now you're probably asking yourself what a revenge trading is. By definition, is revenge trading is when you get into an emotional tussle or hustle with the market and become overly aggressive with trading. For example, you have suffered some losses and you're understandably upset about it. So you're, you set out to get revenge on market, the one who took your money away. Well, you know, we you know what will happen then. Uh, the typical revenge trade will be double or triple the size of the previous losing trade. So you will probably reason this out as I can make back what I lost and I add a gain to, it, to do it and I do it quickly. The only problem with this approach is if, if the traders' hasty decisions turn out to be wrong, they're going to add a double sized loss to what they already lost. So. If you're wrong with your revenge trader, you will lose double than what you already lost. So you never, never do any revenge trading on your account. For example, we had a trade and we entered with a lot, one standard lot. 
For example, we shorted today Euro USD, and the trade went wrong, and then it hit our stop, and we go to double the size of previous entry size. So it's too lot. And if we are wrong, what what will happen? We will make it double. We will lose double, and this turns revenge trading into a never-ending pit of bigger and bigger trains. Until what? Until a margin call occurs. So basically, your revenge trading will come to over trading. You will double your risk size in order to cover for your losses, and then you will lose more and more. It will come eventually to that. Maybe sometimes you will get your trade right, but at least one time it will be a loss, and it will be a huge, a huge loss. Uh, well, it, it, it came to that. Missing good trades can lead to wrong entries and lot size. That's also, that's also a thing. If you miss a good trade, then you say, well, 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 wait, I will join a trade, but it's probably late. And then you had a, a big lot, but you, you know, you're wrong, and market eats your money. So basically, I think it's always slower climbing back up, back up out of the hole than it is to fall down into it. But the longer term rewards are much better. You need, you need to accept defeat for the moment and admit your mistake. So never, never go for revenge trading. That will surely burn your account. Burn you. It is slower to climb back up than it is to fall down into it. But I say again, longer term rewards are much better. So Chris, do you agree with me? Yeah, for sure. That's, that's absolutely key indeed. And uh, the basis of everything, basically, because if you don't have the, the capital or the ability to preserve the capital, then that's basically game out and over for for traders. Because that's that's our stock. If you want to compare it to a company, right? That uh, that's our stock inventory. And if we don't have stock, we can't sell anything, right? So, absolutely, we we need capital and we need to manage that. Otherwise, if we risk twenty five percent on one trade, then it goes down fast, right? So well, yeah, absolutely. it will go faster, and, and, and traders just cannot accept the truth. The, the Forex is a marathon. It, it, it is quick market. It's really is yeah. indeed a quick market, but it's a marathon, and you need to be profitable in longer term, not one month or two months or I don't know three. You need to be profitable every year. But if yeah. you if you if you have a fear, okay, I will tell you about other symptoms of fear. If this is present. You should really think about it, and you should really delete that. When suffering from fear, you may also cut winners short in fear of giving profits back. Those are other symptoms of fear. Cut your winners short in fear of giving profits back. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. You need to let your winners, you need to let your winners go and cut your losses. I will be quick also about it, Chris, if you agree. You also can hesitate in pu pulling the trigger because you fear the prospect of a loss. You also hang on to losing trades because you fear taking the loss. And then you will jump into unplanned trades because you fear leaving money on the tab. You see, you shouldn't do it. If you think it will be a good trade, you need to believe your guts, your instinct. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And in that way, it is a tricky balance to, to find because there are many pitfalls um, during the process of a successful trade from the very start of the analysis to actually taking the trade then to staying in the trade then to managing it to either the profit or loss but hopefully profit uh, that you designated uh, so there, there that is quite a process to, to achieve and when we do then uh, we should be proud of ourselves I think and once that uh, is done often enough you know then it, uh, it becomes a bit easier as well so, uh, but there is a lot of a lot of hurdles on the way. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, this is maybe a slide that uh, is a bit double in a way, but just emphasizing that positive mindset in a way. This is a bit more psychology in a way. Uh, so a bit different perspective here. But uh, what happens sometimes as well is that 
if uh, if you're depending on the experience level, but if you have a bit more experience, if you've been trading really for a while, but you're kind of like break even all the time, you got the management money management under control, so you know maybe you, know, you got the strategy in place, but uh, you're bumping into the fact that you're not executing your plan maybe perfectly, you're taking you're leaving a bit of profit on the table and stuff like that. Uh, and eventually you, you bump into some difficulties because you see danger everywhere. And I think that that's kind of like a medium stage where you bump into the fact that at the beginning you're all excited about the market, you see opportunity everywhere and it probably goes well at the beginning and all of a sudden you got a, a big drawdown kind of because you see that there's more to trading than you expected and then you build on those aspects to get better and better. But then eventually, I think many traders come to a point that you see a lot of dangers, and uh, I think it's still good to, to realize that there's opportunity out there, that you need to hunt for that opportunity in a controlled manner with a positive mindset. So I just wanted to say that. Um, and let's see what else is said here. Yeah, basically, once again, emphasizing that the fear could be way down deep in us, that we have in ourselves uh, regarding our emotions uh, attached to, of course, money and being right and good, what we've learned from the way past from when we were child and small about um, what we should do. And basically, I read an interesting book about that, is that how we try to, uh, are taught actually to manipulate our environment to achieve our goals. So with that kind of mindset, you know, we might be trying to manipulate or get the market to do what we want it to do, but that's not possible. The market is the, pos the market is the market basically, and it will do what it wants it to do. We cannot control the market. All we can control is our actions, and that's something that uh, might be uh, difficult because of our you know, subconscious, what we've experienced. Uh, so once we free ourselves from these emotional chains, we'll be able to to trade with a clearer mental mindset, okay? So that's a bit of a deeper psychology there. And then um, going back to you know, the subconscious part of our mind, and then just one more mention about this, this brain freeze, basically, is that you want to make sure that you're not, just to repeat, just to uh, emphasize one more time, you don't want to have those past mistakes haunt you so that your fear of taking a trade, as Nenad was saying, that you're dwelling too many times on your mistake, um, that you're not concentrating on the present moment, because this all reduces your intelligence, your, you know, your awareness at that present time, which is very important, because trading, you have to be on the ball, what's happening now, um, to make good choices. So um, avoid that brain freeze. Yeah, so that's about, yeah, I think that's a good point. What do you think, Nenad? Yeah, well, I think that's a good point, and we will talk about it later, especially this past mistakes haunting you. Yeah. Because if that happens, you know, uh, uh, traders need to know one thing, trust your gut. Yeah. I need to say again, trust in yourself, trust your gut feeling. You need to have a, a, full, a, a full awareness of what's happening in the market or what's happening to your trades, to your analysis. And you need to trust yourself first. And if that happens, I can say, if that happens, you will lose another good opportunity to trade. If you missed one opportunity because of your past mistake haunting you, for example, that, that's a good, that's a good uh, thing to pinpoint. Uh, for example, we are sitting at our computer desk on, I don't know, some Tuesday afternoon, and your trading session has just closed out, and we see, for example, a well-defined pin bar setup that is showing rejections of the confluent level, and is also in the direction of dominant daily trend. All size point to be this a very good trade, uh, being a very high, for example, quality setup that we should take. And the problem is that uh, we are sitting here staring at a setup, and all we can think about is how, for example, we got burned on a very similar looking pin bar two weeks ago. And then we admit that, for example, we risked a little bit too much on that last trade, that is past mistake haunting us, and we decide not to enter this setup. And in the next few hours, for example, we check the market before going out or at the bed, 
and we see that the pin bar has come off, for example, 70 pips in the direction we would have entered. And that is the past mistakes haunting us. A good example. And we are not we were not willing to risk again. Why? Because we didn't believe in our gut, in our guts. We didn't have how can I say we didn't have the balls, okay, to enter the market. We need to believe in ourselves. Because if we don't believe in our job, how are gonna we go through life? It's same for trading. If we don't believe in this, what we do, we won't make it far. Same goes for forex trading. If we don't believe in our setups, in our analysis, if we only read other people's analysis, okay, don't let, don't get me wrong. It's okay to read, and if it if it, if it's good, and it's same as your analysis, it's okay. You have double confirmation. But if one analyst say it will go up, another one say it, it, it will go down, then we are confused. Why? Because we don't believe in ourselves. So we need, we need. Then what will happen? That will happen. It will reduce intelligence, awareness, cognitive skills. We will be paralyzed to make a trade because expert said it will go up, and we thought it it will go down. And then we may, and then we make over analysis, fearing another loss. We are worried about making mistakes, bad choices, being wrong, afraid to lose money. But we should never do that. We need to believe in our ability. Well, maybe you are asking yourself now, how exactly do I trust my gut? Well, you have to believe in your forward trade ability. If you don't believe in what you do, I told you, it's same for life. This self-belief in your trading ability comes from learning and for effective methods, methods, methods in training. I, for example, uh, uh, have learned to do price action. And I believe in my price action. I have practiced my trading strategy re in real-time market conditions. I made money and I know that I, I'm sure in myself when I do that. And, but it, it took some time. And after that, I have learned to recognize the opportunities and patterns on my trading strategy, and I will su successfully trade them. And I, I try to trade them. Because if I don't believe in what I do, how can other people believe in me? You know, Then I don't help either them or myself. I think that I don't help anyone if I don't believe in what I do. Do you agree, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, very key indeed. Uh, we had some comments, by the way, uh, as well here. Uh, um, I think that uh, sh knowing support and resistance properly will reduce most of our fear. So that's that was a comment there, but the person doesn't know how to identify that. So maybe we could uh, do a future webinar on that. Yeah, uh, we could do that. Could yeah. be a good idea. Uh, there will be. A, I think there should be a recording, by the way. There was a question on that. And uh, there was someone who, let's say, is asking you actually about the stop loss moment, Nenet, about how yeah, many yeah. stop loss average you have. Well, okay, uh, we will have a webinar concerning the stop losses, uh, right, Chris? Uh, I think that we will explain that later. Now, in this webinar, uh, well, yeah, we cannot explain, true. we don't have real time charts, but I promise you mm -hmm. that we will do that. Uh, Maybe maybe next time or maybe some of next webinar, but I will explain how to put your stops. It uh, I will say this now. Uh, it depends on a uh, time frame you are working on. For example, it's not the same if you are trading on a five-minute time frame, and it's not the same if you're trading on four-hour time frame. So I will explain how to put your stop loss. But basically, if you are buying off uh, support and selling close to resistance you will be in a positive territory over time because the, your stops your stops uh, will be smaller i will explain that but i need uh, you know i need to prepare charts i need to pinpoint good setups and some of our next webinars i will surely do that so yeah, for example there is cool. a strategy that you can also buy into resistance and you can also sell into support and uh, by doing that, you need to be aware that you are breaking one of the main rules of trading, buying into supports and selling into resistance. But it also can be done with a small risk. But sometimes, 
we will also explain that. So basically, so basically, that is the thing concerning money management. You just need where to put your stop, and you should never be fear that your stop is being hit. It's okay. It's a normal thing. If you if you enter with a normal lot size per your account, your you, your account will be safe. Believe me. I have done that many times before, so I I know. I just I just know what I'm telling you. And also, yeah, we have another sort of, of fear, and it's a fear of ourselves. This is basically what I was telling you five minutes ago. If you don't trust your own analysis, then you have a fear of yourself. You just don't believe in yourself. Why is that so? We have two basic things. We have facts and we have assumptions. Facts are observations gathered from price data. A new swing low, for example, a new swing low has formed. That's fact. We can see that on the chart, and we can see that new swing low, a new swing high has formed. And then, next step is assumption. In our mind, we develop a, an assumption. And assumptions are conclusions drawn as a result of those facts. For example, I have I have seen the string low, and now I'm thinking, where should I put my stop? And that is assumption. So, what is fact and what is assumption? Facts are undisputable, while assumptions involve a degree of doubt. But the problem, the more assumptions are made, the less secure we become. Again, we need to be strong-minded and decisive. If we see a string low, and we know that it is for example, a support level. And now we are eager to take a long position. We need to put stop just below that swing low because we have a fact and now we can draw an assumption. Maybe we are wrong, but that assumption is, is in start it's okay because our stop is reduced. You know, even if we are wrong, technically we are right. First of all, we are buying from support and second of all, the, stops, the stop is smaller because it's only a few pips away from that swing low. And our assumption is that the price will turn. And now, it's very important to know about information overload. The more we wait, the more we hesitate to make a decision. Hesitation is equal to a missed opportunity or entry too late. Now we are back to our our first slide when we are talking about taking a trade which is all which is which has done its average true range or its average daily range and we enter too late. So because of that, we should never have that information overload. If we if we see a swing low and for example we have waited all day to see that swing, enter a position, be a brave, be a decisive. It doesn't matter if you are wrong. If your analysis is okay, if you have a if you have a, a successful trading history with that trading style, don't hesitate. But to have a good successful history with your trading style, first you need to demo trade. It's a, it's a, it's an easier way to demo trade. It's uh, for example, ten years ago we couldn't have demo traded because it was some sort of paper trading. There, there, there was sort of paper trading. We, ne we needed to write with pen and paper. Now we have computers, we have internet, we have systems, we have charts, we have meta trader platform. We have a good broker. Use it. Use it to your advantage. So don't hesitate to enter the trade if it agrees with your, again, well developed strategy. Not a random strategy that you have heard maybe yesterday. You need to have a well-developed strategy. And only then you enter a trade. And don't hesitate. You need to believe in your trading system, strategy, whatever, and don't hesitate. The effect will become assumption. But eventually, over time, your assumptions will be 70% right. OK, Chris. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely true. Uh, eventually, the gut feeling uh, actually that we have and you rightfully talk about uh, is often 
kind of the assumptions that we produce and the, you know we have to be careful of that then again the more uh, we trust that often these gut feelings will be proved to be right indeed the okay. more experience you get and the yeah, more kind also, of mm -hmm. yeah. sorry yes. uh, the more like data data bank of of experience and and past experiences we have you know the more when we do see the, the chart the more pattern recognition we have the more with reference points we have that's what I wanted to say basically yeah yeah and the thing is you know uh, guys uh, think about the military sniper who for example has his target in their scope and all years of his uh, training have come down to this scenario so that uh, military man is he going to start getting emotional and overthink the situation or is he maybe going to pull the trigger and operate without hesitation I think the latter because he has been trained that military man, an army guy, has been trained to pull the trigger. And he probably had years of specialized training and he already know what uh, he should do before they do before he do it. And this is exactly how you need to operate to be a successful forex trader. You need to obtain training in a specialized trading strategy that works. You need to know your strategy. And then you need to predefine all aspects of trading before you enter the market. Militaries try to predefine everything as much as they can before going into battle, right? And also you go to battle. If the militaries don't don't do that, they will end up operating on emotion. If you do that, operating on emotion, you will surely lose because you don't want to be fighting with an enemy who is operating on logic. Market operates on logic. Big money, big traders, big hedge funds big companies operate on logic they don't do it emotionally and the trade in the forex market is no different you know it's no different every professional trader has been trained and they have practiced their trading strategy so many times and they know what they're going to do before they do it so you also need to follow them you need to follow the big money you need to be a small fish eating the shark Big money is the shark. We are all small fish, you know. We are hunting down the remnants of shark's meal. So yeah. basically, <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. That's Absolutely. the same thing. But we need to be trained. We don't want the shark to eat us. If we yeah. are not trained in what we do, we will lose. That's yeah. the thing. You need to be fully prepared in, in all these aspects. And then the psychological aspect will actually become slowly but surely less important if you are prepared to to that extent as you were ex explaining you know then you you that that fear will also diminish slowly but surely with with that uh, fully preparedness indeed absolutely and uh, yeah just one more thing about uh, your belief system maybe in a way it was a funny thing about um, an example here a real life example of a person that was losing money, and the, the the basically the coach was asking, you know, why are you why are you losing? Why do you think you're losing money? And they were talking about this, and I don't know how long the process took, but uh, basically at the end of the day, he found out that he was actually subconsciously kind of wasn't too unsatisfied with losing money because he deep down wanted a divorce. So <laughs> I know that's quite an extreme. And I'm sure that uh, that's not uh, the case for the majority, uh, but you know there are some things maybe that you want to take a look at as well that uh, could block your path of success, and you don't even know about it. So take a look at that. Uh, this is a quite extreme case, of course, but you know maybe another example is thinking that your that the market is bad or taking profit is is greedy. You know things like that uh, might also hinder your trading as well. Just like having certain thoughts about maybe the mechanism of markets, um, you know, these things can go contrary to the nature of the market, how it behaves. So that could be one more thing to look at. If uh, if you think if you think that your plan, your money management, as we've been saying, your trade management, your risk management, if that's all in place, your trading strategy, but the success is still not there, you're still breaking even, then uh, this could be maybe another level. Uh, that you want to take a look at. Um, you know, also regarding the trading plan, because that is, I think, an important part, as Amendment was saying, 
being fully prepared, so it is definitely worth mentioning here as well um, that uh, you need to find a plan that uh, and strategy and risk and money management and trading management and trading style and analysis that suits your character, that matches who you are, uh, that uh, you are able to execute that plan without too much nervousness. Um, of course, back testing, testing, preparing, 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 preparing. All that is crucial, but uh, choosing the path that fits you and suits you uh, within that preparedness is uh, important so that you're not, because what could happen is that, for example, you, you actually uh, are a swing trader, but you find out uh, later on that maybe, for example, intraday trading is something that actually suits your character and trading style more. Uh, despite all the things that you've done to become a good swing trader, kind of like it could happen that maybe other style fits you more. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But definitely, you know, once you've chosen your path, you need to be ready with a with a very sturdy game plan, right? So somebody's asking asking us actually about if we can tell something about developing a strategy, and that's a bit too long of a topic actually to go into now. But um, that's something we'll definitely keep in in mind. Um, Philip, no, sorry. Quarterly for the next month. Okay. And yeah, we can do that. Why not? We can yeah. show some good strategies that uh, people can use. For example, some fast strategies we cannot do now. There are many strategies, but we can explain maybe in some of our next webinars what strategy we use for trading or we often use for trading. But that that also requires experience. For example, there are many sorts of trading styles. There are intraday traders, traders. There are also scalpers. There are intraweek traders, longer term traders, counter trend traders. It all depends what you want to be. It all depends, but it eventually comes down to see. Trading is a challenge, but you need to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, if you're in a constant pressure of being wrong, if you're constantly wet, you know, and you're constantly sweating then you, you don't have to trade. You, you should go and find another job. Uh, trading eventually gets boring over time. Because, you know, there are some good movements, but you don't jump in. For example, Euro USD today, you saw what happened. 2840 to 2740. And then probably some guys, uh, traders, were thinking, no, now the support has been broken. Now we will enter short on 27.50. And what happened? It, it happened that it was bought, and it came 120 pips above that. So what the, what the point is, for if you set your, your trading style not to trade on bid rate days, then do it. Today, it was, it was a bid rate day. I don't trade. Maybe I can trade, I don't know, dollar, a pound, dollar, or some other pair, and it would be a scalp. But I don't intraday trade when are bid rate days. And that is the first rule of my trading. It is boring, maybe. Okay, I didn't have any trade today. Okay, it's boring. But trading needs, trading needs to be boring because you respect your set of rules. You don't jump in every possible opportunity, especially today. Now I know that many people have lost money today. There were people, there were traders that, that uh, made money today. But, you know, eventually it will all come that, to that that you won't trade on bid rate days. It's very risky. There are very big spikes. There are no banks to defend support or resistance level because there is huge volatility. So basically what you need to do is to make a set of rules and you need to respect the rules. If you don't respect the rules, the market will eat you. Don't blame the market. You need to challenge yourself. Market is always right, but ask yourself, are you always right? You don't have to be. With good money management, trading without fear, even with an average system, you will be profitable. Believe me, you will be profitable. I think, Chris, that I'm, I'm you know, I'm yeah. being right in this. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. It, I think that it's a, it's a good measurement. Measure how much fun you have while trading. 
can you smile? Can you make a joke still? Or are you so tense <laughs> and nervous, you know, that you're just like not even laughing if someone makes a joke? So, you know, that could be a good measurement of how comfortable you feel uh, with trading. So, you know, that, and, and depending on your answer, you might want to take a conclusion and make a conclusion how far in that development you are and, and what you can do to, to improve that. Absolutely. Yeah, we never, never ever have ever, ever, never ever have regrets about missing the opportunity because market will eventually come down to you. Exactly. Come down. There are so many opportunities, and you know, oh, the next day we'll, there will there will be others if today doesn't bring any anymore. So, no, no worries yeah. about that. Yeah. I think the, the the this is something I got actually from a trader I've been talking um, online with. And uh, he has uh, a lot of experience, 10 years plus. And, you know, he, he called it the super cool mind state, basically, where basically, um, non he said, this is how he formulated it. Non profitable traders have a conflict, uh, an internal conflict all the time between their logic and how they reason. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a uncertainty all the time uh, with trading. We've talked about that. So he says that basically the end goal, or the end stage, or where we want to all be at when we have that uh, experience and we get so far is that we are in a super cool me mental state, basically, where we are in control. We have the confidence, but not, not too confident. We are uh, analyzing. We're alert. Uh, there could be some you know, emotions that the emotions that we, you know, other traders feel as minimal, very little. Uh, there, of course, is just a an analysis process of the charts in the most steady and secure way, without getting into any state of emotions that might disrupt that balance. Basically, that's what it boils down to. So, uh, because the thing is that if we get an emotional state, uh, this will bring a level of discomfort to us which we basically, at the end of the day, want to get rid of. We want to get rid of that discomfort. So we either click the trade out so that we get rid of that anxiety. So the whole idea of that reaching that mental state of super cool man, mind state is that we don't even get to that level of uh, emotional imbalance that we want to get rid of that discomfort. No, we're always in that comfort zone. We're always in, in charge of those emotions. and that We don't let those emotions take control over our trading. You need to, ah, this is, this, that's it. How to overcome the sense of fear. You need to trust in yourself. I talked about it. You need to trust your inner feeling, your analysis, your mindset. You need to believe in your ability. You need to be brave and smart in the same time. You need to be, just listen to me, brave and smart. You need to pull the trigger in your head. You need to be decisive. You should never hesitate to enter. Never ever hesitate to enter if you believe in, your, in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then okay, try to, to read a lot, try to do something, try to, I don't know, go to a fighting sport. Maybe you will develop some self-awareness then. You need, you just, whatever you do in your life, you need to believe in yourself. For example, it's the same. When you see a good looking girl, would you hesitate to approach her? If you are hesitating to approach her, then you, you, don't, you just don't believe in yourself. You have a problem. Uh, if you are calm and cool, you will have and gain experience. And then the sense of fear will diminish and trading eventually will, will become a sort of boring. That is what, I, what I've been telling to you. If you do a lot of good money management, if you know what you're trading, if you know how to trade, it will eventually become boring. And you should always know that market will be here. And don't chase it, because it's the same as chasing the shadow. If you're chasing, if you're running after your own shadow, you will never catch it. But if you stay in the place and, you know, Watch it, it, it will come to you. Just you need to be, you need to be patient. It's the same. Running for the shadow and running for the market. You will never, you will never catch it. But just stay in the place, be calm and be patient. It will come to you. 
and eventually it will come to you. That is your trading opportunity. You need to be a stalker. You need to be. You need to pray for your prey. You know. You need to stalk after your prey, and then when the when your opportunity comes, jump in. That's what spiders do. That that's what tarantula does. You see, it stalks its prey, and then when it's ready, it's very patient spider. When it's ready, it jumps and kills the prey. You need to kill the market. You need to be profitable. Only when you're profitable, then you you have the advantage. If you don't do that and you hesitate to do that, then you're not a fighter. You're not a fighter. You should never let go. Don't let go. Go after it, and, and never let down. You know you should never ever lose a feeling of self-importance. You should never ever lose a feeling that you are the leader. The market is only to be followed, but you are ultimately the, the leader. Just, just believe in yourself and just do what, whatever you want to do, but do it smartly. Risk. You, cut your losses short and let your profits win. It's okay to close a profit for 10 or 20 pips if you are scalping. But if you do your intraday trades or intraweek trades, for example, it's your trading style, then let your profits go with you. Let your profits go along with market, go with the flow. Just don't cut it short. If you're scalper, it's okay. If you risk 15 pips, it's okay to close it after 20 pips. It's okay. Because I told you, 70-30, if your odds are 70-30, you will you will be in a profit, but just you know you need to know your mindset, and you you need to know what your money management is. I think that over time you will you will be bored with with, with trading, and you will find uh, another things to do, maybe also for forex market while while you trade. I really enjoy to make analysis. I really enjoy to help traders. I really know how to. I think I know how to teach others to 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 win. So it's 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 all it's all different thing, but it all comes to this that I'm sure in myself, and I'm sure how I'm gonna do it, even if I lose. And of course, I have an occasional a loss trade, but it's okay because I will make out of it. I know where I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. But then I will make out of it. I will write it down and I will analyze my past losing trades. And then I will I will make it out. I, I, I think I think I'm i I'm a smart guy, okay, maybe average. But it's okay. As long as you know what you're doing, you will be right. Okay, Chris. I think that people should should all all uh, pay attention at at least at least to market, but most of it to themselves. To themselves. You, yes. Traders, you need to analyze. You need to analyze yourself. Don't yes. analyze just the market. It's no. it's it's a thing which we follow. But analyze yourself. Are you willing to follow? Are you ready to follow? Are you a stalker? Can you ambush the market? Can you come in from behind? Be a dirty player and take most of it. In this job, sometimes you need to be dirty. You know, you need to know when to jump in the market. You need to take it down. You you need to perform a takedown, but you need to be a smart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, don't rush in. You need to be a smart one, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I think there was a, a very good observation about uh, having a a vision of uh, of the market as a leader but having also the ability to listen to the market and you know the ability to to be flexible on that so that i think is a, a great uh, combination and probably the most you know best winning uh, combi out there um so absolutely very good stuff there of course chris well there are many many days a lot of days where where i was really uh, hesitating to enter but not because i don't believe myself it's just the market didn't come to me. The simple yeah. thing, market was ranging, it was 30, 40 pips range. Why would I trade every day? I don't yep. trade every day. 
I trade only when I see the opportunity. Yeah, that me is too. When I trade, but me too. No, yeah. <laughs> even if I because if I, because going for trades every day, it, it it really puts too much pressure on catching a trade, and it's like it, it's not good for the psychology. I think it's just if you have more relaxed attitude and only look at the markets, and then you see that opportunity, and then you you set up your plan and you wait for that. You know that makes more sense. Absolutely. Of course, we need to be patient. We need to be a waiter, you know, waiting guys, waiting traders. Just we need just to wait and to spot an opportunity. Then we jump in. We perform. Yeah. How I say, take down. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, we're getting a bit of overtime here. We're just going through a quick to-do list. What I what we uh, made here. Uh, so maybe some like. Concrete steps that you can think of to uh, to improve in 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 the whole process, basically, um, and I will just answer some of those questions that uh, some of you made at the very end. Uh, for those of you who can still spare a few minutes to stay around, uh, so we have kind of a, a short to-do list. Maybe, for example, do a SWOT analysis of yourself. For example, look at your strengths, weaknesses, analyze yourself. Uh, take a look at what you think could be better, what could be changed. Um, try to make it as honest as possible. You maybe even ask other traders to to make an analysis of yourself, so you get a different perspective. So then you can you know look about what you want to change that uh, meets your uh, desired you know potential. Uh, take small steps then in meeting those goals. So you you set targets right. Um, for long-term targets that are ambitious, but maybe also some short-term targets, and it takes like, small steps every day, which are concrete steps to accomplish those goals. All right, because this is based on your own framework. Everyone is in a different stage of their training, right? Uh, some have might be working from the very beginning, so you, you might have a bit more to do. Some already have a lot of stuff checked off, but you have some steps, few steps, smaller steps left, uh, or you want to increase your probability. So it depends. So that that's all individual, but this is more of a guideline, a rough guideline, what uh, could be used for for everyone. So of course, very important the evaluations along the way, most mostly after your trading, so that you have that fresh uh, look on trading when you're trading, and then when the trading finishes, right? Then you can focus on all the evaluations you want, which is very important, so that you learn from your mistakes and remember the lessons, but don't dwell on your mistakes. And when you start a new day, you forget those mistakes, you forget the past, and you're fully focused on the execution and trading in the now. Uh, someone said in the chat something like a Zen state, indeed. Very good observation there. Absolutely agree. So you're executing, with Nana also said, without that fear, but with the patience. Keeping a positive mindset, basically. Uh, motivating yourself by setting those those big goals you want to fulfill with succeeding in trading. So that could be anything, wanting to retire earlier or more comfortable, or wanting to buy that dream house or helping your family, whatever it is, whatever big goal you have in your life, that's when you want to have motivate that motivates you. Print it out, put it in front of your screen, and you know look at it when you get discouraged or annoyed by some trading mistake of yours. Look at that dream and. That may help control your emotions as well, so that you, you know, keep that focus. Realize that you're in control of your risk, your trades, your strategy, your actions. All right, um, you're not in control or responsible of the market behavior that is outside of your control, but you're in control of how you view it, how you view the market, how you approach the market, and what you do with that information, and what kind of a, what kind of um, facts and assumptions is the word I forgot assumptions you make that's your control that's what you can handle so do that without blaming the market approach trading as a game make it fun exciting put it as a challenge to yourself approach it with military dis discipline as Nenad said and uh, you know that's about it I guess for, from the to-do list but above all as I said at the very end have fun <laughs> so <laughs> Of course, I agree with yeah. you, Chris. 
traders should have fun while, while doing this and trading and, and also they should all have fun in their life because if they're uh, under constant pressure that won't uh, do any good to their health. So basically you need to think about yourselves in terms of health also. If you get nervous every time you trigger a trade and then you True. trade for, I don't know, trade to go in your direction, it won't do any good uh, in long term. So Absolutely. you need to be relaxed. Even if you lose, you need to be relaxed because you, you, you can control your losses. As Chris yeah. said, maybe you don't control the market, but you control your losses. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you need to keep that uh, emotional and physical health um, balance as well because, as you said, it's a marathon. So, you know, you could maybe muster enough uh, strength and willingness to take a lot of stress even for a year or two, but eventually it's going gonna, gonna to bite you later on. And that's not good. So you need to keep that balance also for the for the longer term because it is a marathon indeed in that regard. So yeah, you gotta keep a balance. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I completely agree. I guess uh yeah, that's about it folks. We we do have a few questions, but for those of you who uh, might want to skip those questions, I thank you a lot for being here. Great that you're here. I hope that you join next week for the money management side. So thanks again. Yeah, uh, that will be myself. very sorry, Chris. That will be yeah. very important, and it will be very good for you to hear money management, because we will be explaining money management, and I will be also explaining my money management. Well, cool. you, you will see. My money management is a bit of different. That's standard money management, but it's a profitable. So pay attention to that because you won't have many opportunities to speak to a full-time trader and to speak to to actually a person who knows how to how to make profits out of it so you know there are many many guys but every every thing that i talk can be can be checked out for for people who for for people who want to i don't know there there are many firms who wanted to actually want me to be a head trader head trading for them and they all check my statements so basically you know Everything I do, it can be, it can be, uh, it, it can be <laughs> seen. So what I'm saying, what I'm telling to you, next time we will talk about money management, and next time you will learn a lot how you place your trades per your account, and we will give you a spreadsheet of compounding. It's a very good thing to have to, and to know about compounding, because if you do, if your strategy is to do compounding, you don't withdraw your money. You actually add adding uh, to profits. You will see how much money you can make just by, by compounding. I will show you that. Oh, absolutely. That can go pretty fast. Yeah, pretty fast. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that, so that's great stuff, guys and girls. That, that's going to be a, a smash. I would definitely recommend being there next week because we're going to have a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, a question or two. Thank you for all your thank yous, first of all. and. We did have a question or two uh, earlier on. Let's see, not many, but that we didn't answer yet. Um, let me just quickly see. Well, how can we emo minimize emotion? We went through basically that's the whole goal of the webinar. So, and the person left already. So, okay. Uh, what was the website, uh, Nana, that you talked about at the beginning? Uh, the website. Uh, just remind me what what website. I don't know to be honest. A website. Coast mm -hmm. Coast Week. Which website do you mean? I don't know about the website. What Maybe where you ah, had Forex the Street. articles. Ah, Forex Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The first site was what I uh, talked about was was uh, Forex Factory. It's uh, the site where I'm running. I've been running my personal thread called Spiders Den. So basically, what you should do is just enter Spiders Den on Forex Factory or, or Google. You will see that's uh, the, my main thread where I make analysis. Sometimes I make live calls. Okay, I know. I, I state again, I'm an outsource. I'm a freelancer, so I don't work for Admiral. So I I can make some, you know, I can make some uh, some uh, live calls. So basically, what I do is analyze the market. Maybe um, from time to time, I'm giving you the opportunity to enter 
on exact same levels uh, price where I enter, to put, uh, along with stop losses. So basically, it's a spider's den trade. And the other side is Forex Street. And I, I was writing for Forex Street, uh, I don't know, maybe for a couple of months. But uh, because I don't work anymore with that firm I work in, now I don't write for Forex uh, Street anymore. I'm just keeping the blogs on Admiral, uh, Admiral uh, Serbia side and on uh, Forex Factory. But the Forex Factory is a really a well, uh, how can I say, well-read site. It has a lot of visitors. Maybe it's the first site in the world concerning trading. So I'm I'm happy about my uh, readers there. It has, cool. it has I think over three thousand and six hundred view, views per day. Yeah, that's so that's a massive amount indeed. Yeah, massive. So amount. that's really a lot. So yeah. take a look at that if if you like. Um, we also had a question about fibs. How they work? That that's probably going to require a uh, webinar too. That's a good topic. I, good I topic that. I'm willing yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That that's. I, I know about. about I'm a Fibonacci <laughs> trader, so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so then we got the trade. Maybe the same uh, same same kind of trading here, uh, and then I. So that's that could be an interesting topic. What else do we have left? I think that we got one question left actually, and that is how true is that the market is being controlled by big corporations and market can go against technicals. Sometimes this fear kind of nags me when I read too many news. I, I can say that uh, you need to know what, uh, when to trade and when not to trade. For example, today it, it's a purely, purely news driven, funny driven day. And uh, if, you, if you've been following me on uh, Spiders Nano, maybe on Admiral Marcus blog, or I don't know, uh, I, I always tell people not to trade on bid rate days. It's my, it's my really a rule, a standard rule. Don't trade on bid rate days. Today it was that day. Tomorrow it will be NFP. Okay, but starting from Monday, next week, we will have a full access to a normal trading market, the normal technical trading. You need to know when to trade and when not to trade. When you see very, very important news, when you see very important news, don't trade. Don't enter the trade and, for example, stress tests, uh, stress test, uh, bid rate days, uh, other, I don't know, Cyprus uh, decisions or something like that. Uh, you don't enter the trade. You need to wait for market to fully form into straight, uh, standard tr technical trading pattern. Then you trade. But if you're willing to take a risk, then you need, again, you need to know where you should put your stop. Today, it wasn't technical trading. It was strictly news-driven trading. So you just check your calendar, for example, Forex Factory site or I don't know, some other site which has full access to a forex calendar, and you need to know when to trade. That is, that is the, the answer to your question. And big companies have a lot of money. They, they can really invest and pull out of money so quickly that we cannot imagine, and they really can uh, move uh, and uh, make market move. Because you, you need a lot of, a lot of money to actually uh, move a market for a single pip. So basically, you, you all, we all retail traders, uh, need to know that we cannot move the market. We can only follow the market. We we only follow big money. We cannot move the market. Absolutely. Central funds, central yeah. banks, commercial banks, pension funds, uh, big companies move the market. You just follow them. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Valerie, that should be recorded. So. Uh, I think you should ask customer service from Admiral Markets because I'm not sure where it's available. So if you would be so kind to send them an email, that they should be able to lead you to the recording, and you can take uh, another look at uh, at all these slides and uh, take a look again. All right. So I guess we're going to wrap it up, wrap it up now. Uh, thanks for being here again. I uh, love the session here. So next week, don't forget money management. We'll be here with another session. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Also, I want to thank you all for attending the webinar. We will have some webinars, uh, as Chris uh, said, uh, next month. I think it's uh, one per week. So feel free to come. Feel free to ask whatever you want. 
you can ask something maybe about euro usd pound dollar some analysis so we if we have time we will respond to it see you next week guys thank yeah. you for attending cheers guys cheers cheers cheers